Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, we're talking about five decks that are not yet in Master Duel that you should be aware of. And we're gonna start off here with the one that I think most people are aware of, which is Tenpai. Now, Tenpai is a going second to deck that plays a million hand traps and then OTKs you through Pot of Prosperity. How does it do this? Well, each one of their cards basically has two things that it does. One, during the battle phase, well, actually, just at any point, basically, quick effect, synchro summon, using it. Incredible. And two, they also have the ability to search or do something at damage step, right? Now, they also have a unique effect, because of course Yu-Gi-Oh cards have three effects at this time, because of course they do. Now, on top of that, they also have a field spell that prevents them from being interacted with during the main phase one, and if destroyed, also generates them additional attack damage, which is kind of crazy. We have Song and Kaiman, which also does additional car or additional stuff if you use it during the battle phase, and it being a quick play means that it's pretty good, right? And basically each one of these cards, except for maybe this guy and this guy, does the full combo by itself. So if you see a single Tenpai, you see the whole combo period, right? Which means basically any single one of these cards translates into full combo, which is an OTK. Again, through Prosby. We'll get to that. So you can play a myriad of hand traps. This is the exact list that got second place at the most recent YCS behind Jesse Cotton. This deck is silly. <clears throat> so let's quickly talk about this. First and foremost, we have Chandra, which uh, during the battle phase immediately synchro summon or at the start of the damage step, if this, if a monster battles, doesn't even have to be the Chandra, just if a monster battles. You special summon during the damage step, means you can't ash it. Special summon a level four or lower fire dragon monster from deck. Crazy. Now, what are you summoning? You're summoning Pydra, because Pydra says on summon, you can add or set a Songan spell trap from your deck. Incredible. And then also, once per turn during the battle phase, you can just synchro summon using this card. Great, fantastic. Moving on. Also, you take no battle damage from battles involving your fire dragon monsters. Kind of interesting. Why is that notable? Well, because Fadra has the effect where you can't be destroyed by battle. Incredible. Also, Synchro Summon. And then on top of that, if it is normal or special summon, you can target a level four or lower dragon monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Now, why is this important? Well, because all of these facilitate a really cool strategy of summoning this guy. Now, if you didn't notice, Chandra is a tuner. Whoa, that's crazy. Level four tuner and level three non-tuners equal level seven. Now, level seven gets you into Bident Dragon, which says if this card is synchro summoned, you can target a fire, fire dragon monster in your graveyard, special summon it. Uh-oh, guess what? This is also a tuner. You bring back a non-tuner and then you can use that tuner's effect to synchro summon at quick effect speed. Yay. Now, why is this important? Well, because what it allows you to do is if three or more attacks are declared, you can reborn it. Crazy. Now, remember, that's just if three or more attacks have been declared this turn. They don't have to resolve. You just have to declare the fucking attacks. And this doesn't even have to be your attacks. This could be your opponent's attacks. You just, there he is. It's a guy. Then on top of that, you can special summon this card from your grave and destroy a spell trap on the field. Now, notably, this includes your own. Why is this important? Well, because Songan Summoning says if this card is destroyed during the battle phase, obviously it's just a field spell. It does, it makes your cards unaffected like every other field spell. And then on top of that, it searches a card like every other field spell, right? But it also says if destroyed during the battle phase, you can target a dragon synchro monster you control and double its attack. Whoa, that's crazy. That's a lot of damage. So all of these paired together get an insane amount of damage. However, that's not everything. Because notably, none of these have any restrictions on what they are summoning. So you could Synchro Summon Trident Dragon. Sorry, it's Trident Dragon. It's Trident Dragon. Which says, when this card is Synchro Summoned, target up to two cards you control. Destroy those targets. And if you do, for each card destroyed, this gains an additional attack. Now this may seem kind of inconsequential, but this is the reason you can put like 20,000 damage out. I don't think it's quite that high, but it's very close to literally 20,000 damage. 
20,000? 20,000. 2,800. No. Two. 20,000. Yes. I got that right the first time. Numbers are hard. Excuse me. <laughs> because... Because... With that and the field spell, you can boost this guy by popping the field spell, giving him an insane amount of attack. No, I think it's actually way higher. Uh, forgive me, I have no idea what the actual number is. It's an insanely stupid high number. Um, also, it's one of the reasons you can OTK with Prosperity. Anyway, the other 10 you can go into is this one, which says all opponents must, uh, all monsters your opponent control must attack. Your opponent cannot activate cards effects, uh, card effects during the battle phase. And if this card is synchro summoned, you can change all monsters to attack position. However, it has a third effect, which says, sorry, fifth effect? I don't know. Who cares? Who's, who's counting at this point? If three or more attacks have been declared, special summon this from the grave, then non-target, destroy a card on the field. Coolio, just that card. Get him out of here. Again, notably, doesn't have to be your own card, but you could pop your own field spell. Now, that's the important stuff. I'm going to show you how the combo works and show you just the bare minimum of what gets you to lethal. Okay, let's say, for example, you are me and you are going second. Oh, cool. I'm going to activate this Pot of Prosperity. I'm going to banish a whole bunch of cards that I'm just not going to need, right? Coolio. Banish them all. Activate the effect. Uh, sorry, no, 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 not that one. I don't want to, I, uh, I don't, don't want to activate that. We're going to reveal a whole bunch of cards. It doesn't really matter what we reveal here. I'm going to grab the Pydra. Cool. Coolio. Coolio. Great. Fantastic. Uh, and then, and then I'm going to normal summon the Pydra. We're going to activate the Pydra effect and we're going to add to our hand the Song and Summoning. Great. Fantastic. Add it to my hand. Now remember, Pot of Prosperity does have text. What text does it have? Well, it says right here, um, any damage your opponent takes is halved. Cool. Remember that. Keep that in mind. My opponent is taking half the damage, okay? So, we're going to activate this guy's effect. We're going to activate its effect. We're going to search out. Now, remi rem reminder, right? I drew three hand traps. I drew three hand traps. Had my opponent done anything, I, I hand trapped them thrice. Really good hand traps. Great, fantastic. Cool. I'm going to add Chandra to my hand. And then I'm going to pitch to the grave, I don't know, a random card. Cool. Doesn't really matter. Not that big of a deal, right? Because now, we're just going to special summon this guy. Boom. He's now on the field. Great. Fantastic. We are going to then go to combat. We're going to start off here. We're going to go for the Chandra, right? And then we're going to activate the effect of... Sorry. We're going to activate the trigger effect of the Chandra, and we are going to special summon out the... This guy. Normally, we would summon the... Fa the, the... No, we wouldn't activate the Fadra here. Um, but it's not really... You know, it's kind of... We technically would, so that we could be, like, protected here, right? Anyway, we're going to attack here. Great. Not going to activate any of the effects. Just going to attack. Coolio. Uh, and, then, and, then, and then and then we'll attack here. And, uh, yeah, we'll go we're, we'll go for the for the Kaiman here. Again, I'm, I'm not necessarily doing this correctly, right? This is just to show you what's happening, right? I'm going to add to my hand. You know what? I'm actually just going to add follow-up, so I'm going to add the Chandra. Cool. And then we'll special summon the Fadra. Because we have it. So there he is. Bada bing, bada boom. Right, was this the correct play? Probably not. Doesn't matter. Nope. So we're going to go now here for this. And we're going to... Oh, sorry. This is the wrong effect. Uh, we're going to go for the Chandra. Once again. And, uh, and we're going to attack. Great. Am I going to activate this now? And then, and then we're going to attack. Yep, great. Now we're going to activate the trigger effect. We're going to reborn the guy. Bada bing, bada boom. Out comes the guy again. Great. And then we're going to activate the Chandra effect. And we're going to Synchro Summon. And we're going to Synchro Summon into this guy. Right? We're going to use uh, this one. Boom. Done. Out comes the seven. Coolio. Activate the effect. We're going to bring back this guy. Cool. And our tuner comes back. Great. Now remember, how many times have we attacked thus far? Right? What, four or five times? Right? Right, right. Okay, cool. Well, that card that just attacked, we're going to attack again, right? And then and we're going to attack again, right? And I don't I don't, I don't, don't believe this guy has attacked, right? No, he has. Okay. Well, uh, that's fine. Because we'll just Synchro Summon, right? We'll just we'll just go for the Synchro Summon here. Uh, we're going to go for, uh, you know what, a uh, second Biden. You know, why not? Um, we're going to go with these two. Yeah, send them off. Go into a second Biden. 
Quilio, we'll get a second attack. Yeah, it's a hard one for dinner, but who really cares, right? We'll do 1,300 more damage. And then, you know what, let's let's go for another Synchro Summon, right? And we're going to make, uh, we'll, we'll make Trident, or, um, uh, uh, Transcendent, right? Now we have Transcendent, and, uh, you know, it's, it's still not quite lethal. Darn. Okay, that's okay. Because uh, we're going to activate the effect of uh, our card in Grave, and, and now out comes this guy. Great, fantastic. And you know what? Let's destroy a card. Right, we'll, we'll destroy the Solemn Wishes. Great, fantastic. Uh, we're going to attack again. And bada bing, bada boom. Done. Now, granted, that was not the most amount of damage I could have put out. Right? Because I could have gone for the Trident Dragon instead. I could have Synchro Summoned a little bit better. I could have activated my effects a little bit more in sequence. But again, I've never played this deck before, and that's what happened. That was, again, through Prosperity. Fun. Now, Tenpai is the deck I'm sure most people are most aware of, because it's likely to be the next most important deck, or, or the next important deck to be released. So, let's talk about the most important deck that has yet to be released, which is Fiendsmith. Now, we all know what Snake Eye does, right? I'm not gonna talk too much about Snake Eye. What I am gonna talk about is the Fiendsmith cards, which are kind of obscene. Now, if you don't know what the Fiendsmith cards do, they're pretty simple. Discard this to add a Fiendsmith card. Great. What does this do? Well, it adds Tracked. Tracked says add a Light, Fiend, discard a card. What does this do? He gets you... Where is he? Lurry! Lurry, if discarded, special summons itself. That's it. That's, that, that's the whole effect. All it does, all it does is get you into Requiem, which says one light fiend monster, which can also be done thanks to this chick with any two effect monsters. Coolio. Now, what does this guy do? He says you can only special summon this card once. Great. On top of that, during your main phase, quick effects, tribute to special summon a Fiendsmith monster from your hand or deck. Cool. You can target one light non-link fiend monster you control and equip it with this card from your field or grave. Great. Now, notably, this gets us two engravers on field, right? Because the first engraver that searched out for the card can now target an equip card you control and a monster on your field, send them to the graveyard, right? Uh, or sorry, sorry, sorry. You can target uh, a Fiendsmith equip card you control and a monster on the field, send them to the graveyard. So it's just removal. But more importantly, if this card is in your grave, you can shuffle one other light fiend monster from your grave into the deck or extra deck to special summon this card. Now, this gets you, you know, you put the Requiem back, bada bing, bada boom, this guy. Now you can go into Beatrice, which does a whole bunch of shenanigans, or you make Sequins, which requires two monsters, including a Light Fiend monster, which says during your main phase, you can fusion summon one fusion fiend monster from your extra deck by shuffling materials from your grave into the deck. Now, what are you going to make? That's right, it's Lacrima, which requires two Light Fiend monsters, which says, uh, <clears throat> if this card is fusion summoned, you can target a one of your Light Fiend monsters that is banished or in your grave and add it to your hand or special summon it. Awesome. Then, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target, or sorry, you can shuffle one other light fiend monster from your graveyard into the deck slash extra deck and inflicts 1200 damage to your opponent. Cool. Why would we want to make Lacrima? Well, it's actually just to make this guy, which says, which which does require Fiendsmith and Graver and two light fiend monsters. Okay. Which also says you can negate the effects of. Uh, of a face-up, or sorry, of a number of face-up cards on the field up to the number of total link rating of link monsters equipped to this card, right? Now remember, Re Requiem, Requiem's effect, which does have the ability to equip itself. So you get out the Requiem with another Light Fiend, which is pretty easy due to the engravers and all of that jazz, right? Um, and then you are able to make this guy. I'm, I'm not too certain on the combo, but the main point is you basically make this after having gone through a whole bunch of other interactions, and now you have an Omni Negate on top of that, or you could just make Beatrice, which also does some very, very shenanigan stuff. So I'm going to quickly show you what this does. All right, so here we are starting off with Bonfire. Hip hip hooray. We're going to act as if this Bonfire just doesn't just doesn't do anything for it. Great, we're gonna go for the wanted here. We're gonna grab up 
the DFL star, we're gonna go for the DFL star, we're gonna fix this guy, we're gonna go like this, we're gonna say, oh no, oh no, all of our plays got stopped by my opponent's hand traps, oh, whatever shall we do, well, let's link away our guys and let's make moon, what, what, why are we, why are we making, oh, 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 to go into the link one, and out comes Requiem, Julio, out comes Fiendsmith Engraver, cool, awesome, fantastic, what does this do for us? What? This seems really, really silly. Until you see... This. Out comes Necroquip Princess. And then Fiendsmith Engraver has a graveyard effect, and we're going to shuffle back the Requiem, and we're going to special summon the Engraver. And now we can make many a thing, right? We can go for Fiendsmith Sequence, which allows us to go into the Omni Negate through this whole line, right? Or... Or, the other option is we can go Beatrice. Now, the list that I'm currently playing is Jesse Cotton's uh, tournament winning list, which doesn't have that many great Beatrice options here, right? Um, so, instead of going Beatrice, I, there are still great Beatrice options, I'm not going to lie. But instead of going Beatrice, I'm going to show you the Fiendsmith stuff. So we're going to go for the Fiendsmith here into uh, Sequence. We're going to activate the effect of the Sequence. We're going to make the Lurie. Or a Lacrima, or whatever, uh, yeah, Lacrima here. And, uh, and now we have the ability to, uh, activate this secondary effect, which says, um, uh, you know, you, you can equip it, right? We're not gonna do that, obviously, because now we can just make Promethean Princess. Woo, fantastic. And then Lacrima effect is going to be able to shuffle that back. Now, obviously, I don't think that that's necessarily a good idea, but you, you can obviously do that and shuffle it back, and now you can go for uh, Poplar. Hey, we didn't activate the Poplar effect, so let's activate the Poplar, and now we're off to the races when we can do all of the Snake Eye stuff that we want to do. Whoa, crazy. Now, what if, pray tell, you didn't want to do that, and maybe you wanted to do something else? Well, let me show you that. Okay, now let's say you actually open the engraver. Great, we're gonna add a tract here. Now, tract, what what does tract do? It's pretty simple. You search out the lurry and then you discard the lurry. Great, fantastic. Lurry now hits the field and then you can immediately link it off for this guy. So instead of getting two monsters, we just had the one. Great, fantastic. And then on top of that, we can go for the engraver here in order to special summon uh, this guy. Great, and then we also have the uh, the secondary effect where you contribute this guy in order to special summon a second engraver. So we have two engravers on field. Great, fantastic. Which now, again, basically gets us into whatever we want, right? Which notably, it can be this guy. Now what does this guy do? This time, we can now make the actual Omni Negate, which is... Oh, sorry, I went for the Lacrima here instead. Um, oopsie poopsie. That's not what I was supposed to do. Um, but that's okay, because now Lacrima does have a target, and now we can go into a rank 6, right? Um, I was I was trying to go for the Omni Negate. I, I accidentally clicked the wrong one. I clicked Lacrima. But uh, also there, because I had the three targets, right? I had the Fiendsmith Engraver and two like Fiend Monsters. I'm going to shuffle all of those back in order to go into Desiree, which is the Omni Negate, right? You can negate the effects of face of cards on the field. Great. Fantastic. <clears throat> right? However, here, I now have the ability to either make a 3-mat Apo, already crazy uh and look at what else is in my hand wild right so i could do that i could activate this graveyard effect which says you can banish this card to fusion summon a fiend smith fusion monster from your extra deck right um uh, using monsters from your hand or field coolio right so i could i could do that i could still go into desiree right still an option right or i could make beatrice I can make be I can make Beatrice. Whoa! What does Beatrice send? That's right. Any card. I could send any card I wanted. Whoa! Now, now, why is that important? I don't know. Maybe, maybe we send like a Snake Eye Ash here, and then I don't know, Promethean Princess, and then we go as special summoning back. You get the point. All right. Now, those are the two decks that we're expecting to be top tier. So I'm going to quickly run over the last set of decks. Starting off with the White Forest Archetype, which is likely to be the next big, like, uh, obviously it's part of the DFL Star lore, so it's probably going to be a similar nature to something like Mana Diem or Kashtira or even Tier Lament, right? Depending on the next waves of support. Now, what does this archetype aim 
uh, or aim to do? Well, first and foremost, on summon, they search cards, pretty standard. However, on top of that, if this card is in your graveyard, you can target a white forest synchro monster in your graveyard, return to the hand, and if you do special summon this card. Cool. Great. That's a very solid card. However, most notably, what their archetype is centered around doing is utilizing, um, bu -bu -bu -bu. let me see, let me see if I can find the effects. Um, yes, here we go. If you control a white forest monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, and you can send one spell trap from your hand or field to the grave to draw a card. This is what this archetype centers around, sending cards from hand or field to the graveyard, most notably spell traps, in order to generate advantage. Now, as of right now, not a lot of them do a whole lot, right? For example, we have uh, this one, which sends a spell trap from hand or field to the graveyard to special summon this card from your hand, then add a white forest monster from your deck to your hand. Great, that's a fantastic effect. You're just sending it to the graveyard, bada bing, bada boom. Now, this is why we see it played with all of the runic cards. Fantastic right um however the payoffs are honestly not too great in terms of the actual archetypal monsters if this card is special summon you can send a spell trap from hand or grave in order to add a white forest card or a light spellcaster from your deck to your hand cool not that big of a deal but like fairly decent and then on top of that um uh they also gain attack and then they can't be destroyed by opponent's card effects cool nice protection effect uh you also have the silvera which says if this card is special summoned, you can change face of uh, monsters your opponent controls to face of defense position, coolio, and then it also inflicts piercing battle damage uh, and double piercing battle damage, which is fine, right? Uh, and then you have Diabel, which says if summoned uh, using a tuner synchro monster, you can target a spell trap in your grave and add it to your hand, notably allowing you to go for the runic stuff. On top of that, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can send a spell trap from hand or field to grave to special summon a level seven or lower tuner synchro monster from extra deck, grave, or banishment, which is really cool because you can cheat out a whole bunch of shenanigans, right? Things like F.A. Dawn Dragster, uh, of course, your own monsters, and Zapper Shrimp, which says if summoned, you can send one other card from hand or field to the graveyard, then target a spell trap your opponent controls and destroy it, which is a great way of dealing with floodgates hooray um also once per turn during your opponent's main phase synchro summon using this card hilarious and there's a bunch of other stuff that you can go for obviously but that is the most uh those are, those are kind of like the most notable things right so uh yeah being able to summon out like dawn dragster is is uh pretty cool so that paired alongside the ruining stuff makes sense and this is kind of the next archetype to like really look out for and then we have Melodious, the fusion deck, which is pretty simple, but basically either first movement solo or ostinato allows you to get into a full combo, which ends on a very unique board. And I'm going to try and show you ultimately what that combo looks like in a second. Uh, but just know that like it is more so centered around uh, getting out a difficult to beat board, not necessarily something that is inherently interactive. So hopefully that makes sense, and I'll show you in a second. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start off here with Refrain. Refrain is then going to activate its effect, and we are going to search out the uh, Couplet. Yes, and then Couplet effect is going to activate, and we're going to Special Summon itself, uh, while also Special Summoning out, or sorry, we're going to Special Summon out another one of these guys, and uh, that happens to be Soprano. Soprano is going to activate its effect, and we're going to Synchro Summon, or sorry, Fusion Summon here in it to the uh, the new uh, Bacha, which just requires two Melodious monsters, and on summon, if this card is special summon, you could special summon a Melodious from the deck, and then if it's sent to the graveyard, you can target a Melodious in the graveyard and special summon it in defense. Great. So we're going to go chain link one this, chain link two the frame, put itself back into the back row, and we are going to special summon out the Soprano. The one, or sorry, Shrapina. The one card that actually does shit here. Uh, then we are going to add it back to our hand, the Soprano. And we're going to put the Couplet into the Pendulum Zone. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to activate the Couplet effect in order to search out the Concerto. And then we're also going to activate the Refrain effect. And I actually did this a little bit incorrectly, but it's not going to be too big of a deal because we already drew the Aria. Normally, what I'm supposed to do is use the Shopina in order to grab 
grab the aria after sending it with refrain which would then give us the ability to pendulum summon it here so now what we're going to do is we're going to pendulum summon out one and two and we're going to go one here and two here uh i should have put this in defense you'll see why in a second um now we're going to activate this guy effect and add this guy back to hand, which then allows us to special summon it as well. And notably, this says, while this special summoned card is on the field, Melodious Monsters you control cannot be targeted by card effects or be destroyed by battle. Cool. That's why you put it in defense. Um, so basically all that this is providing right now is the can't be destroyed by card effect uh, or can't be destroyed by card effect can or can't be targeted, can't be destroyed. Right. However, we can do a little bit more because we can go to for this one and we're going to use you and we're going to go into Schuberta, which says, uh, sorry, first things first, uh, we're going to, we're going to go and activate this effect and we're going to bring it back and notably not once per turn. So we're going to fusion summon again. However, uh, Schuberta says banish during the player's turn banish three cards from any graveyard banish them and then this card gains attack which also means you can do it during damage calculation which is kind of funny um but it's not that big of a deal we're also going to then activate its effect as well in order to go into the uh fusion for three which is going to then make this guy which is pretty impactful and this is generally the board you're going to end on potentially you can end on more potentially you can end on less but i also have two hand traps in my hand so that's more or less what this is now what this card it does is it banishes melodiuses to return face-up cards your opponent controls to the hand so notably the effect is to banish a certain amount of melodious cards which means you can play around evenly which is great and then you can return cards your opponent controls which is great um so yeah lots of really like specific interaction but with the ability to do this off of singular card right this was kind of the weakest of the hands but notably you could do this off of a singular card in austin auto which basically gets you the exact same board on top of that you also have the ability to potentially go into uh additional cards right like an sp little knight or a an ip mask arena to kind of top that off right uh and then of course the hand traps so this is generally what the deck does all right, now real quick, let's talk about Ritual Beast. Now, uh, Ritual Beast is probably the lowest on the totem pole at this point because basically it's just Protoss Turbo. You search out Protoss, you summon Protoss, and you kill your opponent with it uh, by basically preventing them from, from doing a whole bunch of things. However, it does have a lot of other things that it can do, most notably due to uh, some of the new cards. Laura, when it's banished, summons a guy from deck, uh, and since a lot of the cards banish, it's very nice. You can also play Shifter, which makes it also very strong as well, and then you also have the new Fusion, which can be Fusion Summoned in a similar capacity to um, the other uh, uh, Phantom of Ubel, right? Um, by by banishing the materials instead, which again can trigger Laura and uh, just puts them into a pretty decent position, all things considered. And then you also have the new uh, the new Link monster, which says neither player contribute cards to activate a card or effect, which is rather funny because there's a bunch of like random synergies and stuff like that that. Uh, are now kind of locked with that however it also has the ability to target one of your banished ritual cards or uh, ritual beast cards return it to the hand or extra deck and then uh normal summon a guy and then during your opponent's turn you can target a ritual beast card you control on a card your opponent controls and banish them again potentially triggering laura and uh yeah it's just a nice uh targeted banish so there's that along with a minor floodgate but the you know that's just like another thing to kind of do you can also make the omni negate with ulti guy of Helio. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of more or less what you're doing. You could also potentially search out Nemesis, uh, Nemesis Flag with the uh, Infernal Flame Banshee to go into a Colossus by returning one of your banished guys. And there's a bunch of other random stuff that you can do, but for the most part, it's not all that impressive. And that's basically it. Hopefully this gives you a in-depth guide, or not a guide, uh, an in-depth understanding as to the decks to look forward to within Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. And uh, yeah, hopefully this helped you know what decks to save up for. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy it. If you did, I like it very much. I appreciate it. And remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.